Hi. Hi. Hey. G'day everyone. Thanks so much for coming by for our Beyond Bluey podcast today with myself, Aussie Girl Margie. And I'm Pugly, as you probably already know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure as you saw from the thumbnail today, we're going to be talking about the episode Double Babysitter, doing a deep dive into that with Rad and Frisky, as well as how that links up to the future episode, The Sign, with their wedding, possible baby, all of those sort of things. So really excited to get into this. Yeah, and there's like lots of like little things that we were discovering with Double Babysitter here. And I think I'm we have like a lot of cool things to talk about. So I'm really excited for today. Yeah. Um, so yes, this is a live stream as well. So if you guys are watching, please jump into the chats, throw in any questions you have. We'll try and like answer them as much as we can while we're talking about the episode as well. We'll be showing some clips based on what we'll be talking about. Um, but yeah, let us know in the chats as well where you guys are watching from and how you feel about the episode Double Babysitter as well. <laughs> so I guess let's start off then with our first thing, um, which is actually, yeah, chili setting them up setting up the whole okay. rad and frisky <laughs> thing that's going on. So and I think, that, yeah. <laughs> oh, you, okay, so, like, it's so interesting because, like, this isn't, like, a situation that, like, obviously happens. I can't think of any situation where, like, I've had a friend that was, like, a parent or anything like that saying, like, oh, I, I had two babysitters come by accident. It's, like, no, oh, no. like, I don't know. Chili, like, we kind of know Chili's, like, well, not kind of know. We know Chili and Frisky are friends. And we know that Chili's like, oh, you just broke up with your with your mate Bosco. It's like, hmm, maybe I could set them up. <laughs> and it's like it's a total setup for this episode. It's awesome. Oh yeah. Like I I don't know. I was trying to watch it like just focusing on Chili and Bannett's reactions and not looking at Rad and Frisky when they first met. And like they both don't look shocked or surprised that yeah, they're no, both they... there. Like there's no like, oh no, you're both like they're just like neutral faced the whole time. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> this one. slay. I love that theory. A lot of people go on with slay in the comment sections. Um, but yeah, I always wondered though, then as well, they love like Chili because Chili's obviously friends with Frisky and Trixie, and like her and Trixie like play hockey together. So I always wonder, like, if they also set up Trixie and Bandit, and like Chili's just like this mastermind getting all of their friends to be oh part of God. her actual family. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. um, I don't know if like when that thought process occurred to me as well but i've also thought about like trixie and chili like being like friends at first and it's like hey let me set you up with uh <laughs> my mate's brother <laughs> it's yeah like, it's i mean it, it obviously worked they moved very fast they went to bali like the next episode <laughs> so <laughs> it, it worked work. um oh, so i guess that's yeah that's kind of like one thing that i definitely wanted to talk about was like that theory but um but obviously yeah, this is our first appearance of Uncle Rad and Aunt Frisky. So we'll play this little clip as well. Uncle Rad's here! Hi, Uncle Ray. Where is he? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, so sweet. So cute, so cute. Um, so we should mention the voice actors for them, of course. Uh, Aunt Frisky is Claudia O'Doherty, so she's a famous Australian actress. And then Uncle Rad is Patrick Brammel, who is also a famous Australian actor. Um, something really fun as well is that, I've got it here, if you really love Uncle Rad and like that kind of humor as well, then I'm going to do a full plug for my mates. So you should go and watch Colin from Accounts. So that's him there. That's Patrick Bramall and his wife, Harriet Dyer. They co-wrote this show. They both star in it and it is so, so funny. Um, it is for like mature audiences because there's obviously like there's bar scenes and things like that but it is so funny and it's peak Australian humor so yeah if you love Uncle Rad please go and check that out as well it's so 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 good and I believe Uncle Rad doesn't add like his voice his normal voice is just the same voice in that show as well so like when you watch it'll be like a like easy to like hear his like it's very clear like when you listen yeah. to the clips on that uh, oh my gosh that's so I'm a scatterbrain today <laughs> yeah so I can um I can see as well in the comments a lot of people are asking like basically all the same questions so we're gonna we are gonna talk about this that the fact that the sign is going to heavily feature Uncle Rad and Aunt Frisky and the wedding so we will get into that guys don't worry but yes we we definitely will go into that um but yeah we just kind of want to talk about like Uncle Rad and Aunt Frisky first and I think I've got the picture here um Yes, here it is. Uncle Rad's car. 
is parked <laughs> up onto the sidewalk there, like the tire skid marks. We've got full on like high lux you. And it's just, I think it's so indicative of like, I guess, his type of personality. Like it's a way to sort of show us a bit more of like, I don't know why he didn't just park on the street like a normal <laughs> person. Um, but yeah, he decided to park up on the grass instead. Yeah, he's this uh, radical uncle, like quite literally. It's like, it's like, it's so like meta that his name like really fits his personality. And it's, it's so interesting <laughs> to see like all these like different things and like how he's mm -hmm. like so lively because we know that he's like the oldest brother out of all of them, but he doesn't yeah. have like any kids or anything like that. And like, he's still like super energetic, but it, it's interesting. I'm actually going to pull up um, Radley's early designs that we see throughout the series. But, like, we see in the episodes, like, Feather One, we see this first Surfer Dude picture, and then in Charades. And we even have, like, Costa's design um, concept art of oh, all wow. these different versions of Radley. And it's like, wow, the Radley we got is, like, amazing looking. But look at all these different Radleys we could have potentially got. It's so interesting to think about. <laughs> There's a lot of red healer in that, to be honest, like compared to blue healer, they really, wow. Yeah. So obviously that was like one of their things is that they really wanted Uncle Rad to show some of the red healer. And I guess also show that, yeah, like two blue healers can have a red healer because those are just like color variations, not different breeds, I think is the thing as well. Like obviously Grandpa Bob has like a little bit of red on him, not a lot, but um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I guess, yeah, they really wanted to show Uncle Rad like really swing to that red healer side. Yeah. That's it's so, cool. so interesting. Yeah. I love so. That. <laughs> and it's funny that like he has like surfboard like uh i guess he's a, he's like a surfer i guess mm. because like his actual design almost looks like a beach as well like his yeah. final design that we have in the show it like it's like a it's sand and then it leads into um like the water it's like very interesting i'm not sure if that's intentional Oh, it just made me think, okay, yeah, so this is, like, that picture that we see. The, this is season two. It's the first time we see, like, his picture up on the wall of him with the surfboard. And we know Bandit surfs as well. Um, so I guess I should also – oh, this does kind of tie in to the episode The Sign. I guess we're going to be talking back and forth about the episode The Sign. I can oh see you guys gosh, in the yeah. comments as well all asking about The Sign too. So, <laughs> so I do think the fact that he's a surfer and he has that really beachy design – that that really does mean that the Aussie wedding that Joe Brum wanted to show us, and we know it's the two of them, um, that it's going to be a beach wedding. Like I am 100% almost sold on this idea because of like his background, his character. Again, Aussie weddings are either beach or bush. So I feel like it's going to be the beach based on Uncle Rad's character type, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That'd be so, so cool yeah and like so, maybe we'll even see him like surf like i don't know <laughs> like <laughs> yeah just like throw him in like bandit surfing in in the background randomly <laughs> like after the wedding or something like that um i feel like that would be really really cool um oh someone said here oh where did it go wonder why there were so many early versions of uncle rad i guess a lot of the time they make a lot of versions of each character until they like really pick that final one uh but they yeah do. I, yeah i guess uncle it's rad like they were really trying to decide the coloring yeah, the coloring was the hardest part because, like, out of all the concept arts I've seen of all the characters, he had the most, like, different ones. Because, like, yeah. if you see a different design for Jack, like, his early designs, there's, like, six. But, like, Radley had, like, what, like, 30? <laughs> it's like... Yeah, so many. Um, also, this question is coming up a lot. Do we know when the episode's coming out, the sign? Mm -hmm. No. They advertised it in December, and usually if you advertise something, you have about a three-month gap to produce it, basically. So by the end of March is like the time frame we're assuming because i don't understand why they'd give us like even longer be like hey we're gonna have a 28 minute episode and then that's it like <laughs> give us a yeah, time they, people. <laughs> they've been really teasing it it's like crazy that we don't really know any concrete stuff about it i guess like the airing i mean we know like a little bit we have clips of like the actual and screenshots of the actual episode but like we don't know like when it's coming at all it's weird <laughs> yeah um so I guess obviously, yeah, we gave um, Uncle Rad a bit of a talk. So we should probably give a little bit of talk as well to Aunt Frisky. Um, so she's an English Cocker Spaniel. And I did at first think that she was a healer. What did you think, Pugly, when you first saw her? Oh, my God. Like, her design is so cute, I got to say. Like, like her design is so cool with her ears being flopped up for her hair. And yeah. it's like, I didn't, I like, once again, like, we only seen, like, 
same breed, same breed couples. And I did think <laughs> her being frisky, quite literally, uh, <laughs> which might have been a design choice anyways, with her name. Uh, but yeah, I didn't think that she was a English Cocker Spaniel at all. I really did think she was a healer. Yeah, I guess because yeah. her like color scheme looked almost so similar to Rad's red healer color like scheme. And like mm -hmm. when... I know, I guess, yeah, the whole, someone's mentioned it before, that she wasn't credited as Aunt in the credits. She's credited as, like, just Frisky. But, of course, she's called Aunt Frisky. They say she's the godmother and all that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, so in this episode, before she's together with Rad, she is called Aunt Frisky. It's definitely just, like, it's just, like, a family Aussie thing. I think a lot of other cultures, they do it as well, where, like, when the mum's really close with another female friend, you just call them auntie this to your kids. Like, I do it. All my close female friends, uh, like especially in Australia, like they're like Auntie Marcy, Auntie Raffi, Auntie Sarah. Like even though we're not blood related, like that's just what you would automatically call them because they're in your kids' lives a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. like it's crazy how many people think that they are like, I guess, an item already or like even mm -hmm. related to the healer family or frisky, I should say, because like there's always people on like Reddit or like social media saying like, well, uh i thought they were already together or like family already it's like not quite <laughs> yeah not quite um i think we had that as well so the bluey website like finally updated all of their stuff and put out like full bios for everyone so that was like friskies but more importantly in friskies one is like it's they made such an effort to make it so specific that it says like this means that she's just like family and bluey and bingo sometimes affectionately call her aunt frisky so it was like really making a point there of saying like she's not fully related to any of them yet and then that second paragraph as well is like frisky and rad met while double babysitting bluey and bingo and have since become a couple like not married not on a honeymoon <laughs> nothing like that like yeah so i feel like a lot of people are always just like i mean we have the clip for it i think this is what this is what throws people off i think with frisky i'm new to the healer family as well and just between you and me, they're a bit crazy. <laughs> yeah. So funny. Yeah. So I think that's, oh, I love this question. I wonder if Chili and Frisky were like childhood friends or something. Yeah, Maybe. I would love that. Like, because we know Rad is the older brother. So then Frisky, it would make sense that she's around the same age as Chili, who we assume is around the same age as Bandit. So Rad's older than everyone. Um. So, yeah, I would really, I don't know, I would like that. I think that would be really cool. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Like, we need some flashbacks. Let them get <laughs> married. That's so funny. But, yeah, uh, we really need uh, some flashbacks from for the adults as well. I, I would love that. Like, just yeah. exploring more on it besides, like, fairy tales. But Yeah. So, that's, <laughs> yeah. So, I guess that's the thing is, like, the episode The Sign is going, may as well. The episode inside is going to be them getting married maybe at the beach, maybe in the bush, I'm guessing beach. So yeah, like we, we know that. Um, but I guess, I don't know, is there anything you want to say about like their relationship and all that like controversy about it and are they married? Are they not? All that um, sort of stuff. No, like not in particular, I guess like the only thing I would want to mention is that like how like well they hit it off. I mean, we had at the beginning of the stream where they like literally look at each other like, hi and it's like wow and they have like such uh similarities i should be pulling up a clip here uh in a, just a moment where they talk about the almond Your milk shampoo so almond, almond milk, milk shampoo. shampoo do you want to have children oh. yes <laughs> <laughs> it's like Love it's that. like it's not it's not as subtle <laughs> but like it's oh, like yeah. quite literally showing that like oh yeah they have like some similarities and they want children it's like ooh, future child maybe it's like yeah. foreshadowing <laughs> Especially, yeah, that 20 question thing, I guess, is like so funny. Like, uh, where's this the wife? I one? know. Why don't we play 20 questions? Yeah. Go. Why don't you have a wife? Well, well how do you know I don't? Do you have a wife? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Uh, yeah. I love that though, because I guess, um, hang on, let me. We're going to, we'll do this part then. Okay. We'll talk about the exes in the future wedding. And then we'll talk about mm -hmm. subverting expectations later. But, um, okay. cause we're kind of like on this role. <laughs> this. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, like this is like, obviously the first time we're really seeing two single adults and like dating life in Bluey as well. And like an actual ship happening for the first time, mixed breeds. 
um, like all that sort of thing really happening for the first time. Like that 20 questions, I think was like such a fun, fast way of getting like a good solid backstory for them both basically. Oh yeah, absolutely. Cause like we learned like uh, Radley's profession, like they don't get to see the family often. And hmm. like we learn about like Frisky's recent ex, which is hmm. like perfect think- for, um, perfect for Radley to yeah. like start making moves i suppose <laughs> but, love is forever. well uh is true love not forever it is i mean i thought it was it's like it's so sad to like one i want to see who bosco is like is he also oh an english cocker spaniel is he a different breed like i'm so curious about that but um but yeah i really i thought it was such a cool way of yeah like showing them like how two adults who are much further on, like they're both definitely like Rad at this point is definitely somewhere in his forties based on the timeline and Frisky's at least late thirties. So Mm -hmm. yeah, sort of showing something like that, I think is really cool where you have these older adults and how they don't have many friends. They focus on their job, which is away from their family and what their lives are like, I think. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's like, there's, I don't know what to even go off of that. There's just so many like exciting things, like thinking about like how the wedding's gonna potentially happen, and I don't know. <laughs> I yeah. don't know how to go with, go about um, it. Space Fox had a really good thing. That's sad when she said, "Well, I thought it was." Yeah, I think this is a really. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, it's a really sweet way of showing that, like, yeah, relationships end, that people can fall in and out of love. Again, like, whilst this is a kids show, it's showing like all these adult things that happen to us as well. Um, yeah, I think it's just really, oh, hang on, this one. Yeah, <laughs> showing that they have, like, yeah, great chemistry and everything like that, so. Yeah, um, and like you said, there's always, um, I guess, in every single episode, there's always something that you can take away from an adult's perspective as well as a child's perspective. I love that writing. <laughs> yeah. Someone just asked two really good questions. Oh, I don't know where one is, but this is one part of it. Um but basically people are asking like if they get married where are they going to live and like mm. are they already living together what's happening everything like that um i guess like that's one of the i just realized so he's driven his car there so that's like the first thing like he's got his car so mm-hmm. i don't know we like to drive in australia because like it's the only way to get around really quickly as well like planes are expensive but he said he works on an oil rig and that's basically all oh, i wish i had a picture of this Oh, it's all at the bottom of Australia, basically. Like, so Brisbane's on the East Coast, like smack bang in the middle. And then you go down, there's Sydney, and you go down, there's Melbourne, you go down the bottom, there's Tasmania. And then like between Tasmania and Perth and the bottom, that's where like a lot of the oil rigs are. Or they're also over in Western Australia as well. There's a bunch over there, uh, which would also make sense. Like it's like very close to Bali. So it's also very cheap flights to go over there. But then obviously Frisky lives like in Brisbane. So if we're assuming, like, maybe Uncle Rad does fly in, fly out work, FIFO work, and then, like, but then, like, where does he live? The girls only see him at Christmas, though, so you assume he doesn't live in Brisbane. There's a lot of theories that I hadn't thought about before with this. <laughs> yeah. It what is pretty interesting. We, we don't – it's funny. Like, we know, like, very little about the couple, but we also know so much at the same time. Like, God, like – they're, they need another episode dedicated to themselves. The sign. But like, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like we're going to like, we're going to learn more, obviously, through the sign and everything. But I just need to know more and more and more. <laughs> it's like never yeah. enough. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, it's also a good way. Um, I guess we can bring in the baby bit. So we assume that like, yeah, not only is the sign about their wedding, but there's the whole um like theory that like frisky's already pregnant because she's like put her hand on her stomach in the episode the decider so Mm -hmm. like that's like of course (laughs) a very like mum move um but also the butterfly as well like that's a symbol of life and death so the idea is like the death part is like possibly like grandpa bob but then the life part is like a new little baby um so would you want to see rad and frisky have a baby I mean, like, who doesn't? I mean, like, come on. Is there if there's anybody that says that they don't want a baby, just just tell it in the chat. I, I can't imagine mm. anyone's gonna say that. But like, yeah. like we, I think this is the perfect opportunity to, I guess, introduce a baby boy. And it's like, like we don't really have a lot of like, be ba- yeah. uh, young. I guess, I guess, young male. There's no young male characters in the Healer family actually at all. Yeah. Uh, so all yeah. Girls. It, it, it'd be a perfect opportunity to introduce that. Um, as for whether or not I want 
a ton of episodes centered around the baby, that's a different story. I mean, like, yeah. Well, I guess <laughs> it, it, that's it's a side what, yeah. character, so. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Like, though, if they end up moving away to a different part of Australia, so then, like, you would only see the baby in, like, maybe two episodes. Like, you'd see it in the sign and maybe again then, like, at a Christmas episode or, like, a family gathering one. But then it would also provide a chance, like, maybe they could fly down to a different part of Australia to visit Aunt Frisky and Uncle Rad, and that would be a cool way of, like, showing another part of Australia that's not just Brisbane. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, that's smart. <laughs> yeah. It's just me pitching ideas to Ludo Studios. Hit me up, man, if you're there listening to this. I'm more than happy to just spitball all these ideas. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, yeah, I think that would be a really cool way of just, yeah, because they showcase Brisbane so fantastically um, in so many episodes. And, like, obviously Australia is a very big country, so I feel like that would be a really cool way of them, yeah, showing that. Um I do love that someone mentioned the chemistry before, and so I wanted to show this clip. <laughs> it's so cute. Like, it's just it so is. playful. Like, yeah, it just, I feel like it seems so obvious. Um, yeah, they're, like, slowly, like, making moves on each other. It's so, it's, like, it's so mm. subtle, but it's, like, it's, like, not, ugh, like, gag. <laughs> but it's it's just really cute. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, there's so many things, the tackling. Um, and then, yeah, this is a good one as well, is obviously, like, because they're not oh, yeah, the same yeah. breed, them being a mixed breed, but see the first, like, I mean, I don't know. Ugh. Spoilers for uh, maybe another episode, but, like, Oh, my Mike, God, I know you're talking about. I thought you were going to talk about, like, Missy or something. No, I was going to be like, either Rad and Frisky's baby could be the first mixed breed we see baby, or in the episode, a different episode, we might see a different mixed breed baby. Who knows? <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> We've talked about that in our last podcast. Go check it out about, like, all the leaks and everything like that. So we can talk about that. Um, but, yeah, I guess is there anything you wanted to talk about with the whole idea of the exes, future, wedding, anything else like that? No, honestly, like, we covered all the bases on, like, what we want to talk about. And I don't know. I'm just excited overall. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's pull back into the episode Double Babysitter then and the whole idea of subverting expectations and showing that through like Rad and Bluey and Frisky as well. So I guess probably this clip is like the one that everyone thinks of first. Yeah, that's Bluey! Oh yeah, because he's blue. I'm a girl! Oh yeah, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I knew that. I'm a girl! <laughs> I'm a girl! What did you think when uh, you saw that clip? So it, I always thought it was funny that they like reference that because it, it's very common to see fans or not, not fans, I guess people that aren't quite fans of the show that know about the show immediately assume that Bluey is a boy. And I'll be honest, I've done that too. I've done that yeah. too. And uh, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of like meta humor where uh, like a lot of like people are like, oh yeah, he's a, uh, I'm going to say he just for the context of this. He's a boy. But it's like, no, like she's actually a girl. And I don't know. I think it's really clever that they uh, had that real life like humor brought into the episode as well. Yeah. I always wonder if it was like, um, if it was an accent thing, because I, I always thought Bluey was a girl. And so then I always wonder, oh. I'm like, I wonder if people thought she was a boy because of the Australian accent, because like Bingo's is a little bit more neutral or more like baby kiddish like. But mm -hmm. Bluey, of course, being a slightly older voice actor, we assume has a stronger Australian accent. So I always wonder, like, is that a reason why people couldn't tell that she was a girl as well? Like, aside from, like, the obvious Maybe. blue blue thing. But Yeah. 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 I I'm not sure. Because, like, I knew, like, when I started watching the show, even before they used, like, she pronoun pronouns, I was like, mm, she might be a girl. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I don't know. It, it felt... <laughs> yeah i love this that like someone else is like um blue from blue's clue is also a girl yeah i thought blue from blue's yeah. clue was a boy so that's I really fair that too yeah um but yeah so i guess like that's the first one of like i like when we were doing like our notes for this we would kind of realize like this is the first example of subverting expectations of being very clear of like just because i look one way doesn't mean i'm another way so if just because i'm blue doesn't mean i'm a boy i'm a girl um, and then the same went for Uncle Radley as well. Um, I'll see if I can find a good clip. Why is Maybe. your hair so pretty? I'm, I'm a milk, milk shampoo. shampoo. Do you want to have children? Yes. 
Oh, I guess good like that. Point. Yeah. I yeah. know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say like the the hair, like the caring about like how you look isn't something that guys generally do. And he's a, he, I would say he's decently like manly. There's not a lot of flamboyant qualities, but he still cares about that. It's like very yeah. interesting. And like obviously, like that plus like he's got like a Ute. He works on like an oil rig. Like, um, oh, I wonder if I've got that. Oh, I don't know if this is gonna show it well. We were talking about like his body shape is different as well. I wonder if this is a better one. No. Yeah, there we go. If you look at his body shape, he's more like rounded almost. He's not straight up and down with lines. Like he looks bigger as well. So he seems like a real like blokey bloke. But then, yeah, cares about um, Armin Milk Shampoo, cares about his nieces, like has that really like softer side to him as well. Um, And I guess the fact that we all thought he was the younger brother, but he's actually the older brother. (laughs) Which is so crazy. (laughs) <laughs> I know. I was so shocked in the episode Fairy Tale when, like, he was the taller, older one. I was like, wait, what? Like, you're meant to be the little one. What are you talking about? So I did not get middle child vibes from Bandit at all. So I was mm-hmm. really surprised about that. <laughs> no, he's totally, like, the oldest. Like, he acts the oldest. At least with Stripe. I mean, like, Stripe's kind of the, the family's punching bag almost. <laughs> it's like... He is. Poor Uncle Stripe. Poor baby of the family. Like, oh, I just, yeah, it feels so bad for him. But it's interesting, like, it, it, it when, I'll be honest, when Ozzy Girl Margie first brought up the subverting expectations plot line, I never even thought about it like that. But it, it's, it's so true, because, like, oftentimes in Bluey, we have these, like, underlying themes that um, that is told or presented lightly near the start. And we have that, like, oh, I'm a girl. It's like, oh, expectations subverted with that. And, like, like tons of episodes do that. Like, Granddad episode, it's like, oh, you got to take care of your body. Bluey doesn't want to. Granddad doesn't want to. Eventually they want to take care of their body learns the lesson and for da- double babysitter uh this uh going against expectations is like shown immediately and then eventually we have like frisky seemingly want like a fairy tale relationship a true love with bosco but that's shattered and then like yeah. the princess aka frisky doesn't want to be rescued by the knight oh it, yeah let's let's put that one in actually i love that yeah. uh let's princess do i have rescued you now we shall marry and the princess replied, no thanks. What? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's so true. Like, yeah, she wanted, like, the true love is forever. Then her heart was broken. And then she's like, no, nah, I'm, like, an independent woman. I don't want to be rescued anymore. Like, it's, yeah, like, again, showing that version of subverting ideas of true love and, like, that you should get married and all that kind of thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, yeah, it's... I love it. It's all so like interesting, and like she's like, I'm gonna try to present a clip here. The dragon, take you back to my castle, and we get married. That's business. Hey, I didn't ask to be rescued. And it's like she's like so independent. It's like so I I just love her personality. It's so interesting. Yeah, I do. I think it's really uh, well. Just looking in the chat here, all like the giggles that they love. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I love that the love story that it's not true love but oh, more yeah. realistic yeah yeah it is sort I of love showing that. yeah like they have like a whole conversation about um like you know what you could be doing instead living by yourself or like settling or all that sort of thing or true love i don't know i think all overall there's a lot more layers to this episode than you realize when you first watch it like it's not just about these two people falling in love technically um but it's also about like bluey overcoming her fears of something different and new And Frisky also overcoming her fears of meeting someone new again after obviously having her heart broken. And there's just a lot going on. Oh, let me Um, grab. I actually want to grab that clip of um, being like, oh, you can't like let these expectations like ruin your life. Like you got to. Yeah. Hold on. Here we go. All right. Let's add that one in. Can I know for sure it won't happen again? You can't. But you have to give it a go anyway. Or you'll be stuck in a tower with the stinky dragon forever. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like the entire, like, like, it's so interesting that like the entire episode's like purpose is like to show like, hey, like you can't let these past experiences like dampen everything else, yeah. your expectations of how yeah. everything else is going to go. And, like, we even have, like, fun little ways of that being shown with, like, Bluey being flipped upside down by Uncle Radley midway through. It's, like, it's being told about this. Ah! Hey, this is weird. Yeah, but before you know it, you get used to it. 
Yeah. It's so cool. Like it's being slowly told like subtly throughout the entire episode. And I did not catch it my first time watching. Yeah. I was honestly a lot of it we caught as we were like doing our notes to this. We were just like, hang on a second. <laughs> like, so yeah, because like I've been doing, I've obviously done all of like my videos for season three. I'm like three quarters of the way through season one. So I haven't really gotten into season two or like my deep dives into it, except for like a few things with sleepy time. But um, but yeah, like this episode just has like I could do like four or five videos on this and like all the different layers that it shows. <laughs> um, I think it's just so, so cool. Um, yeah, especially... it's so funny you said that. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking like... the same thing. thing. I, when I was writing my notes, I was like, this is actually quite the layered episode. <laughs> like... Yeah, they did really well with it here. Um, I think just like with all, like just the storytelling, like the show don't tell part of it as well. I think Joe Brum did really well with the script. So I love some of the comments here. Like this episode has my heart. Oh my God, um, yeah the scenes of them like at the end like it's just all so 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 good um i guess actually should we talk about the shooting star part yeah so all right the I'll, put it, star... I'll put it on hang on hang on yeah the shampoo is great but the conditioner i don't rate the conditioner nah me neither but you know you can't get around with open follicles so yeah, so when we were watching this together, figuring out our clips, I was like, hang on, there's a shooting star at the end, because we were looking at like the stars and trying to figure them out. But um, but yeah, shooting star, guys. Did anyone else in the comments here, did you guys notice the shooting star at the very end? And uh, for those who are interested in like the symbolism of the shooting star, I'm, I'm sure like everyone thinks it's like beautiful and like things like that. But like a shooting star usually signifies like good luck and positive change. And this is a positive change happening in both of their lives. It's it's quite all very symbolic, but very subtle at the same time. This entire episode's deeper meanings. It's so cool. Yeah. So I'm looking at the chat here and like basically everyone else is like, nope, 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 nope. Like no one else. Like a lot of you guys just noticed it now. Um, oh, a couple of people did see it. That's awesome. But um, yeah, I just think it's such like, yeah, when we figured out the symbolism for it, like it matches so perfectly with the two of them and obviously their relationship going on in the future. Just uh, absolutely loved it. Um, but I do also wonder if like these constellations meant something. So in the chat, guys, if you're looking at the stars up there, does anyone know anything about astrology? Because <laughs> I always look at the stars whenever I'm doing my breakdowns because a lot of time I can pick out the Southern Cross, which of course is part of the Australian flag. And it's something that you can see from the sky in Australia. It's a really big part of our culture is the Southern Cross. Um, but I'm, I'm, I don't know any other stars. Um, now, so, um... yeah. I actually posted like a, a, what do you call it? A, a Twitter post on whether or not someone can uh, identify the thar stars. I had someone guess that the left center, uh, the left uh, formation of stars is like Libra. The right is Vertigo. Maybe that's oh. like related to Radley and Frisky's birth month. Um, but one thing that really caught my eye, and this comes from a very smart individual, uh, that is like a psychologist. I, I love whenever he tells me his stuff. But basically, he says in a lot of cultures, love uh, shines underneath the stars. And it's like, that's Aww. very symbolic as well. I, I don't know. This episode has a lot of layers, <laughs> as I keep saying. So it's all many. beautiful. <laughs> Someone, I love it. Someone just was like, a couple of people guessing Ursa Major and a few other people, the Big Dipper. And someone mm -hmm. just said like Sirius the dog as well um okay yeah it's definitely not the southern cross i know that one um yeah so oh that's interesting i have to like remember that for like the future and be like i wonder if like that all has like some links because yeah a lot of the time they do that with the stars because again the animators guys like they put in a lot of effort into these backgrounds like oh my god so yeah. so much <laughs> someone Crazy. says it's, someone said it's orion the hunter okay i have to go back through and like check all these ones um but yeah <laughs> i think that's really cool <laughs> So I guess then um, if we want to go on then from that part into our favorite bits, basically, um, and some of the Easter eggs and all those little, little things. Uh, so what oh, yeah. was your what was your favorite little bit from this episode? OK, so my favorite little bit is definitely the part when they're playing Torchlight. And uh, ho hopefully this isn't yours. I might have stolen this from you. But like when they act when, when Frissy comes by and steal, uh, steals the flashlight and we can see, I should be pulling up the clip, like no literally. Way. Come and go where now? We'll you see. don't need the same game as Bluey. Touching the butt. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> yes. Or is it this one here? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's one of my favorite parts as well. Because there's just so many questions for it. For like, one, 
where were his keys? Like, where were they? Why did she pull them out of his fur, out of his bum? Like, I don't understand. But it is like a cute, like, it looks like she's like touching his bum. It's like a flirtatious thing. Like, it's so funny. Uh, so many people else are like, I love that scene. It's hilarious. <laughs> Secret pockets. Um, <laughs> it's like such a big thing. I think I've done, I did a theory video about this ages ago. Like, like where, where are all their pockets? Like, what is happening? Why do they have underwear? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. But, oh um, goodness. So many of you guys are like, why are the keys all the way in the back? Is there a back pocket? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, someone else friskies friskin. Like, I always yeah, like that like funny little line with her name, Mary mm-hmm. Poppins. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, I mean, uh, I know another one that's really good that I'll pull up is uh, this oh, one here. The yeah. end. In mom and dad's stories, they get married in the end. Okay, fine. For the sake of the children, they get married. The end. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like she's like really like making sure the children are like happy, I suppose. Like, I don't know. She, when she does become a mom, I feel like that's a great quality. Yeah. <laughs> for I her. think that's so cute. I love it. In the chat, everyone's still guessing on the pockets. <laughs> are they kangaroos? <laughs> Maybe there's secret belts in there with like things on them. Uh, but yeah, I do think that's really cute that like they do like technically get married at the end of that episode in that and it's just so sweet. Um, I guess that then leads into like my favorite Easter egg, of course, which is the long dogs. Um, let me find. So we've got this picture of them at the end where they're both together looking up and it's really cute. And then if you look in the back behind them up against the wall, there's two long dogs and it's both of them. There's one long dog for Uncle Rad with like his little fluffy hair and then a long dog for Aunt Frisky with like her ponytail hair as well. Um, let us know in the comments if you guys found these long dogs too. I just think they're so, so cute. Like they're one of my favorite long dog Easter eggs, I think, out of the whole series. It's definitely the most sweet. And I'm I, and I always now that I'm looking at it, uh the one that's supposed to represent Radley, the right ear, I thought that was supposed to be Frisky's hand over his uh shoulder, but no. <laughs> I guess not. That's just the ear. Or may, maybe it could be because Radley doesn't have ears like that. Yeah, I guess it could be. Oh my yeah. god, it probably is. Oh, that's, that's actually, actually... Really sweet. Oh, that is really oh, that's really cute. Um, someone just mentioned in the comments that this was actually where is it? Um this was the hundredth episode that was produced, uh, which oh. is really cool. Like, I love that this was like the hundredth one. I think that's a really cute one that they did, adding into new characters and showing them and everything. Um, that's yeah, that's a really nice little one. Oh, someone here. The long dogs are very romance, very romance. <laughs> very I absolutely romance. loved it. But yeah, that was by far and away, I think one of my favorite ones. I saw someone mention in the comments as well about Hammer Barn. So of course. We see one of our gnomes here, Jeremy the gnome. Jeremy, no. <laughs> um, not broken. He's like all fixed, which is nice. Um, yeah, the hammer barn stuff is just absolutely nuts at the moment. That's like a whole other conversation. But um, but yeah, so I do love that we got to see some of Jeremy's. We got to see all the stars and the shooting star and everything. So I love that. Um, but I guess then, yeah, is there anything else that you really loved about this episode? Uh, no, not that I can think of. I wish I like could find more Easter eggs, but we really like it integrated it into our previous talks. <laughs> so it's yeah. hard to talk about this section now. That's okay. Well, I guess then we can do a bit of a Q&A time. So just looking into the chats now, guys, if you guys have any questions for us at all about this episode, about Rad and Frisky, about the sign, anything like that, now's your time. Um, so I guess we'll stay live for about another like eight-ish minutes. Um, so we'll hit like that 45 minute mark. Um, oh, Professor Chaos, that's so oh, kind of you. you. So some people theorize that Bosco cheated on Frisky because she talks about how Rad will be in search of another princess soon. Oh, that's so good. Oh my god. That like I legit got video chill. will that's, be out tomorrow. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you for thank you for the idea, Professor Chaos. Um oh my god. that's brilliant. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Bravo. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. That's a fantastic theory. I could I could see that. I mean, it's a part of real life. Bluey does want to show all aspects oh, yeah. of real life. Um, I know some people theorize that as well with um, Winton's mom and dad, that maybe the mom cheated on the dad and that's like why we don't see her, but we see the dad more, like Cornelius. So, um, <laughs> yeah. The Cornelius subplot line is so funny. I love and, that. And I, we might actually see some of that in uh, the the sign, I believe. Like they said that they didn't yeah. they, like, mention how they wanted to like solidify or yep. like end it or something. They said um, it came in handy and was going to be, yeah, Joe Brum said in the podcast, um, having that subplot of him meeting the Terrier's mom came in really handy in a later ep, a later longer ep, 
Uh, it's not because I've like free played and had to edit that clip so many times. But um, but yeah, but it's assuming then that it's showing most likely the representation of mixed breeds. And so that that's the topic that they'll bring up because it has been a, a pretty valid criticism oh, of the show yeah. is that they don't show really any mixed breed couples. Like it's really rare. Like it's just rad and frisky. And then the other one is the gray nomads is the other one. Um, so yeah, I think it's like, they're obviously going to address that and that would make sense that like it's going to show like, oh, like families can come together that are different and things like that. So I'm assuming that's what it will be used for most likely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and like, as I said, like earlier, like underlying themes are like so like tackled very lightly near the beginning and then flourishes near the end and a lot of Bluey episodes. So that could be like, that's a real strong thing that you said. I I, I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing as well. Like a lot of people want to see more mixed breed couples. And of course, like, yeah, like the correlation to mixed breed couples, of course, is like interracial relationships and families, which of course is my family. So yeah, I would love to see that too. It's obviously not the exact same because they're dogs but i do think it's like one of those really cool things of like showing kids that like same and same doesn't have to go together because even though like they can see that they're not humans and they don't look the same as humans it is something like it's a concept that children learn same same together same same together color color together color color together so showing that like you can mix and match i think is a good thing to show kids and to express it through dogs yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah um so any other questions guys oh okay will brandy have kids what do you think of this oh. one, um all right so having kids uh in the sense of burying them is off the table for um brandy yeah. as we know uh mm -hmm. i would love to see some representation for ado uh, adoptions and uh mm -hmm. that could be uh i guess a way they could go with brandy and yeah. uh, it would be really, really beautiful, I'm sure. It'd be a very emotional episode, I would imagine. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like I maybe think, you could yeah. show the difficulties of the process and everything. I don't know. What do you think? I think it's uh, I think that would be a really nice one. Or like even just showing fostering, like being a foster mom, I think could be a really cool storyline to go with her as well. Because um, I know there's like a lot of, I mean, there's so there's a lot of layers with adoption, of course. Um, so I think like fostering would be a really nice way to show that. And then they could always show the process of like fostering to adoption. Like that could be an option as well. Um, or they could just keep her childless and like have that representation as yeah. well. There's it's you know, just so many options. Yeah, the, it yeah. would mean a lot for a lot of different people, no matter which route they would go. Um, I know some people when I when I did make my um one's easy dime people are like i would like she would stay childless like not adopt or anything because it yeah. is important representation for some people because adopting isn't really something that a lot of people can even do it's really pricey and the demands for it are really yeah. high and kind of criminalizing for the person's i guess i i don't know their race and stuff and yeah. age and their money i, I don't know it's 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 very there's a lot to it spirited <laughs> yeah um someone said there's a lot of people asking in the comments everyone's basically asking about the sign so uh <laughs> and then some people Perfect. are asking as well like will it be on disney plus so yes guys the 28 minute special the sign will be a simultaneous release in australia on abc as well as on disney plus as well so i think i have um oh i just saw someone thank you professor chaos as well we will get to that yeah your question thank said. you um where is it where is it where is it here we go so there we go guys so breaking news it's gonna be a premiere like all that sort of thing we know it's the biggest show ever 28 minutes um it is supposed to be the finale so you can see here part two one times 28 minutes um so that means of course we've got ghost basket and surprise i i don't know after seeing those two episodes i think the sign comes between them but i don't know like it seems to yeah. make sense and it's like the way that they want the episode the sign to come out on disney plus and everything at once it, it would make sense to have all the other episodes come out on disney plus as well uh, around the same time or prior because it's those episodes are setups for the sign as as you guys know watch our last live stream for that information but yeah yeah all the all the spoilers are in that yeah. live stream um, but yeah so we know it's 28 minutes we've seen a few leaked images we see the butterfly coming back when bluey and her mom are just chilling out in front of a toilet block uh that it seems like socks is in at the time based on like the feet there um the butterfly of course means life and death oh, yeah. so we know that's coming in so possibly the baby possibly someone dying 
We know there's a wedding because, hang on, I've got this image as well because they accidentally had this image link on a like article. Someone took a photo of like Ludo Studios and someone was working on this in the background. <laughs> I zoomed in on it. Um, so yeah, so we can see that the girls are all getting basically ready for like a wedding. So you can see muffins, socks and um, bingo there in like flower head pieces and Bluey's holding something. So the assumption then is that the girls are flower girls and Bluey's the ring bearer. So again, rad and frisky. That's why we know it's those two because it's the only one that would make sense for why socks and muffin would also be flower girls um so that's really cute oh they are really uh, cute yeah yeah <laughs> so we know that so they've got that um so that's where we know it's rad and frisky's wedding and then again the mixed breed couple part that's obviously going to be a topic of discussion within that 28 minute episode um i think that's everything we know is that right um i don't know a lot besides that like i uh, there's been a lot of like kept secret it, it, it's been under wraps like pretty well i mean besides like mm. what we could talk about what we saw in like episodes like ghost basket and how mm. it leads into the sign quite literally but <laughs> yeah so i guess that's yeah that's sort of the biggest one um and then is there going to be a season four of bluey um Absolutely. the assumption is yeah yes um they have not started working on it <laughs> because <laughs> no yeah they've been on the hiatus i believe for two or years a break, now? I should say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All of the two year break. It's a long break. Um, so if we are gonna get a season four, basically you just gotta wait until you can see on Instagram that the animators have started working again and none of them have started working again. Um, so there's like the Bluey World that's coming out in August in Australia. So the musicians are all still working for that. Um, but yeah, so it's like even one of the musicians at the moment, Jazz Darcy, like she's not working there specifically at the moment like she's out on holiday and vacation um but yeah so like none of them are working at little studios so i don't know when we're going to get season four it takes them a year to finish 52 episodes oh my god good point oh no <laughs> so yeah this is a really real long, long hiatus <laughs> so that's why i think like this year i think the only bluey things we're going to get this year is the sign, surprise, ghost basket, and then a bunch of shorts. Because they did say they were working on like 21 different shorts. And we haven't gotten any of those yet. So I do think that that's what this year will be. 2024 will just be those three episodes and all of the shorts. And then I'm assuming they're going to start working this year. So that <laughs> yeah. by next year, we will have new episodes again. I don't think we'll have all 52, but maybe that's what like this was like a uh, plan to do was to see if they could mm -hmm. release it differently cuz like in Australia they used to release like a new one every day, but then for season 3C they released one every Sunday and that seemed to work really well like it gave people a bit of a breather, people were really excited to see the new episode. So I wonder if that's maybe what they might try and do instead is they'll go to like one episode a week kind of release, um mm -hmm. which I think would make a lot of sense as well. It gives them more time. Yeah, so, and I, yeah. I I can't remember. I, I wish I had a screenshot of this tweet, but there's like a tweet from the actual Bluey account where like it was like they like quoted tweet like saying like oh it's Bluey's ending, not having a season four, and they're like don't worry, there's gonna be more Bluey after season three. So it's like yeah. we have like a from the social media account at least uh, confirmation, and that's a trusted source. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right, guys. So we're gonna have to wrap up there. But thank you all so much for coming to join us for this live stream podcast, talking about the double babysitter. Uh, thank you for all your chats, everything like that in the comments. Really, really appreciate it all. Um, yeah, you guys are absolutely amazing. So yeah, I guess we'll be doing <laughs> another live stream again in a little bit. Uh hang on, let's pull up. So if you wanna that's just going to be right in the middle of the screen there. Why not? All right. So we got some socials <laughs> here for Pugly. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you can find me on mainly Twitter, which is the Healer's Fridge. Otherwise, you can find my other social medias by the Ugly Pugly. Uh, my Healer's Fridge, I post a lot of fun uh, updates on my channel, but a lot of memes mostly for, <laughs> for Bluey and stuff. So if you like little funny materials or me just joking around or even me just posting art, yeah, I do that. <laughs> yeah. And then same for me. All of my stuff is just at Aussie Girl Margie. TikTok and Instagram are my two biggest places where I do more stuff. I'm a lot more active on TikTok these days as well. Um, doing more Bluey theories and like a couple of other videos and things like that. So definitely go check me out on there as well if you get the chance. Uh, but otherwise, we will be back next month with a, another video 
Maybe I'm thinking maybe focus something around Easter, most likely, because we'll be Ooh. getting into Easter. Um, I just realized I'm like, is Easter in March or April this year? But yeah. Uh, oh my God. I believe it's in April. <laughs> it's like, but whatever. We'll, we'll be working out. towards that. <laughs> maybe we could do like fairy tale and then in April we'll do Easter. That could work. Maybe that fits in with that theory. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> otherwise, guys, thank you so much for joining and we will see you all in our next live stream. Hey. Thank you. Bye. Bye.